Welcome to the Stories of Starting podcast. I'm Heather Boyd. As a self-employed artist for the last 30 years, I'm fascinated with people's passions and creative projects. In this series, we discover how people like you have started new projects by thinking outside the box, going with the flow, and tapping into their childhood imagination. So hey there, so today we are with my friend Renee Mollet and we're here in her beautiful yoga studio and uh, we just visited her painting studio outside so as you can tell Renee has a lot of talents and uh, we're going to get you just to start by please introduce yourself and tell us what you do. Wow, okay. <laughs> so my name is Renee Mollet, I am a yoga therapist um, and I'm an artist. I'm a yoga teacher, so anybody that doesn't know what a yoga therapist is, I'm also a yoga teacher, um, and I sort of would, you know, spend a little bit more time with yoga for years, and then uh, art was calling to me. So um, I think there's really sort of a, a pull back and forth between the two. There's mm. a really a, a calling to, to do the, the yoga, which I yes. love, and uh, and the art is, well, there's the creative aspect of myself that always wants to... Uh, keep yes. exploring. Yes, and you actually, Renee just showed uh, me a, a painting that she did uh, when you were studying and uh, that really shows about the combination of the art and the therapy, the yoga therapy. Yes. So maybe just touch on a little bit what you told me about the painting and, and about your, your school in there. Right, well I mean I did my, my two uh, yoga trainings but I was also very fascinated by anything to do with natural health. Okay. Um, you know, we all face these challenges in life and uh, a curiosity developed on how to become well, how, mm. to, how to feel better. Okay. Um, I have had some back issues and I was on uh, pain medication and I was close to having surgery and then I, I stopped myself short and I said no. Wow. I don't want to do this and then the pain the pain medication that I was on was really horrible. Oh no. So I thought, well, wow. how can I overcome this? Okay. So I started to do more yoga and um and then I started to be interested in all the other natural health aspects and yes. realized that there was a lot of importance and value to understanding a little bit more about myself and how I interacted in the in the world. Okay. Um, how uh, my process of thought was very important. Mm -hmm. My overall emotions and being, you know, in tune with those, aware of those, yes. and realizing that they were also very important. Okay. Um, so it was developing more conscious awareness about how I am. Yes. So I studied uh, for a couple of years some courses. Uh, at the Natural Health Institute in Montreal and uh, so we learned a lot about who we are as individuals so okay. uh, and the, one of the courses was called Healing Journey it was a beautiful course so mm -hmm. um, the, one of the paintings I did was uh, was a, sort of a self-portrait but sort of more artistically and mm -hmm. then uh, uh, you know this image of me dancing with yes. my shadow Right. Beautiful. So learning to accept ourselves the way we are. Yes. Right. Yes. And uh, and and moving forward, evolving from the deeper awareness that we developed. Yes. By doing this kind of inner work. Oh, that's beautiful. And I'll insert a little picture of the painting. Okay. Uh, in in the video, so people can see it. And that's actually something that has always really struck me about you. I mean, you live in the country. You have this beautiful lifestyle. And uh, I always love your posting pictures of the food, of the, the things you've grown in your garden, and, and you have your studio outside. And I think, I think that's one, one of the things that strikes me about you is you're, you're very in tune with nature, very in tune with your body, and uh, I think it's a beautiful thing. Well, thank you. Well, yeah. it's a process, right? It's yeah. these things, these things that you realize that you start to do that make you feel really good. Yes. Right? Um, yeah. And doing these things and how important it is for our well being and I think uh, being close to nature is very important. I grew up yeah. in the country, okay, um, so and I moved to the city. I spent many years living in the city, which yeah. was wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a draw, there was a pull to get back to nature. And yes. when you think about the closer we are to nature, the closer we are to divinity. Yes. Um, and for me, that's become the most important part of my my own personal practice. Oh, that's amazing! Because I was going to ask you if there was anything from your childhood that's ref uh, sort of influenced what you're doing today. So that must be a big part part of it having right. grown up in the country. Yes, I mean yeah. as kids when we grew up in the country we you know we would just be gone for the day yes. and my mom would ring a big bell. Cool. And we'd have to come home for dinner for the bell. Yes. You know, things are very different now for yes. children, but that's the way it was back then where True. we were just 
in the forest it's true for hours at a time Amazing. so so there's the you know just the smell of pine trees and yeah. the smell it just it, it's just uh really grounding and, and nurturing it's true it's yeah. true and i can tell in your house you have incense and other yes other, uh, cedar. Oh, cedar cedar very yeah. nice so, so really cedar is a beautiful atmosphere and yeah yeah beautiful Definitely. smell wow and did your mom or anyone in your family do uh, yoga meditation art any of those things i think my mom dabbled in all of it okay but uh, both my mom and my dad were very creative people okay cool. uh, they both passed away mm -hmm. um, my mom uh, had studied actually um, um, commercial uh, uh, art commercial oh, art cool. so she was very much into drawing she never really did it as a as a as a career okay um, I think she got wrapped up in being a you know a mom and yeah. all of that she went back to school later on and did all kinds of things my dad was a photojournalist oh cool and he worked for the Formula One he oh. followed the Formula One around for years How and uh, interesting. yeah so there was that uh, very creative artistic side and my two brothers as well are very creative and artistic oh, so, that's so cool. it's sort of friends in the family I love it. <laughs> so the Formula One uh, that kind of like clicked is that why you like motorcycles <laughs> Because that was another thing I was going to mention is that you have a motorcycle. I mean, I, I never was really interested in yeah. until I was actually dating someone years ago who had one. Okay. And I was riding on the back of it and I thought, oh, this is really nice. I yeah. like it. But his, his head was in the way. Oh, no. <laughs> so I thought, well, the only way to get his head out of the way is to get my own license. Get rid of him. <laughs> So that's what I did. I went and got my own license, that's and amazing. and you know the, my life partner that I'm with now, we both ride together and love it. So, oh, that's um, amazing. You know, a lot of people say to me, "Well, that's such a dangerous thing," you know. Mm -hmm. And the moment that I stop feeling the liberated, free feeling yeah. that I have, then I'll stop. Well, yeah. But for now, it's like every time I get on, it's just like. Well, that's it. It just feels wonderful. It well, feels yeah. good. So. And you have control yeah. over what you're doing, and yeah. you're, I'm sure you're, you're And it's careful, not the speed. So, yeah. It's not the speed yeah. that I'm drawn to. It's being outside, feeling, uh, even though we have to wear helmets, yeah. which I would always wear anyway, yeah. just the feeling of being out. It's true. It's, it's just, true. It just it's feels really, really good. And we're all, you know, there's so it's such a beautiful uh, element of exploration. True. Um, because we, we stay off highways. Okay, nice. We're always exploring little back roads into different little areas. Oh. And we've explored beautiful oh, places of Ontario and Quebec just by, oh, that's you know, amazing. just going. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when we were kids, we had a, a moped. Okay. I had a couple friends that had mopeds. I think they were in style in the 70s. But I remember puttering around in the park on this moped and, and you know, having that feeling, you know, of being free and yes. in touch with the, the, the nature going around the park. And, yeah, I could understand. Like, I should definitely try it sometime. <laughs> Well, it's not, not for everybody, everybody that. that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, really. But anything that gives, you know, clarity to the mind. And yes. I found that being on the motorcycle is, is a very meditative practice. True. Um, all of the practices that I've drawn to, been drawn to now, restorative yoga, yeah. which you're very familiar yeah. with, and meditation, which I've started to do every day for an hour. Amazing. Um, but being on the motorcycle, I have a really good feeling in my body, like okay. I can notice you know, feel my body, feel the two sides of my body. Do I feel balanced? True, and, and true. really being aware of posture and yeah. as, well, as well as, you know, everything that's around. So well, it's, it's a true. really yeah. um, meditative, uh, meditative thing to do. It's true. And that's part of the safety thing, being able to balance and being yes. in control of, of, the, of the motorcycle. Yes. So you must have read Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. I started to, I got yeah. about halfway through. Okay. And then I get, I, I guess I just, I don't know. There's so many things to read. Well, it was a lot. <laughs> time ago I mean I think I yeah. read it you know probably when I was in my early 20s or yeah. something I should reread it or yeah get an audiobook or something there's but, a lot of books out there that are worth rereading I don't remember the exact time but I know we met through we too which is the women's um, entrepreneurial exchange yes, wonderful uh, in group. Montreal well, on the West Island women's networking group yes and so I met you and I found out that you did a restorative yoga that's how I first knew you mm -hmm. and I think after a couple of times of having met uh, I decided to take one of your classes uh, that was at a studio that probably no longer exists anymore. But I took—I remember taking one of your classes, and I remember I made you some little yoga earrings right. for fun. And uh, I and I loved the class. I loved the class, but I didn't really pursue it at that time. And then when I joined uh, the Om West, I started taking doing your restorative classes there. Mm -hmm. You did—you uh, did a regular class, and you did a gentle yoga class, right. which I loved. And, uh, and then about a year and a half ago, I actually put my back out mm. really badly. And uh, I went to see an osteopath and uh, you were one of the first 
people I thought of to call so I called you and then you came over to my house and you set me up with my own routine and we right. sat down together and we filmed the whole thing and I still have it on um, I put it on private on my YouTube channel so I watch it whenever I need to and then I did put my back out again recently but it's because I know these techniques now I was able to like quickly take care of it get back into the exercise right. and it's incredible how these exercises that are so gentle mm. And you can't even imagine how they're going to help you, but they do. So can you talk a little bit about the restorative yoga and, and part of about what people can do at home, you know, for themselves? Right. Um, well, I think in particular, if you have injured yourself, it's usually better to, to have this one-on-one -on -one yes. time with someone to really help you move through it. Definitely. But there, there are so many tools at our disposal now. Yeah. And the thing is, once we've injured ourselves, it's almost like we create this protection mechanism around the places where we're hurt. True. Like we're creating a wall of tension around yeah. where we've hurt. Okay. And so what we want to try and do is, is explore the places where we're hurting and bring some awareness in and bring some subtle movement in. Okay. Okay. So okay. some people after they've hurt themselves are afraid to move. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, but we need to st keep moving. Yes. So it's finding this and it's really subtler yoga, mm -hmm. softer yoga, mm -hmm. um, especially if we're going and doing kinds of people. Yes. Right? So yeah. we always want to, people have a tendency to want to push through. I want to okay. push through this. So there's, I find that often there's two types of people that want to push through and the ones that want to push it away. Okay. Right? Interesting. Um, and the truth is you cannot heal your body if you can't feel your body. True. Yeah. So the more we're up in our minds, the more we're dissociated from the body. Uh -huh. So it's about coming back to the body, feeling the body yeah. again, and doing what's necessary to get it moving um, in the best way possible. Yes. Yeah, it's true. And one of the things that I remember... Um, well, I, I often do the exercises, even sometimes I do a few of them before I even get out in a, a bed in the morning and it's a way to sort of wake myself up. But something that I remember uh, in one of the restorative positions, and I guess most of them you do the same thing, but you say to breathe into that point, like yes. to breathe into, and at first it's hard to wrap your head around, like what do you mean by that? But then with practice you get the idea and you actually breathe into that spot and yes. it, it's like it melts the pain away, which yeah. is amazing. And I think the best way to describe it is, is you know, if you, if you think about using a flashlight to look into a dark space, okay. we can use the breath as a tool to bring awareness and movement, subtle movement um, into those places okay. and our minds get in the way and says well you can't breathe there yeah yeah um, so and I think a, a really big part of the practice of you know of developing this sense of awareness and mm -hmm. wellness is moving away from those outdated thoughts and beliefs yes really being creative and playful yes. it's like okay well my mind is telling me that's kind of weird but i'm going to go with it yeah. and see what happens got nothing to lose right right, yeah, right. Yeah. so bringing that cre that curious element into into our recovery into our healing and okay. not getting sucked down by the negativity that we can sometimes get wrapped up in when true. we feel like it's just stopped us in our tracks it's true yeah. and i love that idea of being playful you know and it's it's so funny because more and more with everything i do a lot of uh, listening to personal development uh, mm. videos success things for you know selling online and all this stuff and a lot of people talk about that idea of being playful right like even with the law of attraction you know a lot a big part of it is you just play with it like does it work I don't know it might work it could work but if you're if you're playing with it and having fun you know you've got nothing to right. lose and you're bringing positive energy to what exactly. you're doing so it's bound to do something positive yeah and yeah. the breath is really the foundation of every yoga practice right yes. which sometimes we forget and yeah. we forget how powerful the breath really is it's true. until we start to do it regularly no it's right? true it's, it's really uh, I mean on so many levels how breathing helps you know moving energy more efficiently in your yeah. body moving oxygen more efficiently in your body true not to mention all of the other aspects of just developing more awareness in your body yeah. um, and and you know diving in in that way to to help your body and, and people have just noticed such a big difference just by tuning into their breath for a few moments yeah a few minutes every day is really is really helpful especially you know we have such crazy lives now it's true there's so much going on there's so much happening so many people are suffering from anxiety yeah. and from stress 
Yeah. And the first step away from that, the first step back is through the breathing. It's true. Mm. Yeah. Wow. That's so wild. So tell me a, a little bit about your meditation practice. Is this something that's evolved? Uh, yes. Well, I mean, you know, I think like a lot of people, you sort of, you're off and on the wagon with meditation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So I'm no different than everybody yeah. else. You know, I'll do it for a little while and then I'll stop. And, yeah. and, uh, and then uh, in the spring, I went to Vipassana, which oh. is a 10 day. A silent, silent retreat. One. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Which was the first time that I've ever done it. Wow. Um, so I, I, I really didn't know what to expect. Yeah. And, and uh, it was challenging, but yeah. I was also pleasantly surprised. Amazing. And, um, and so I think that was the big turning point. Yes. Yeah. Um, when you start to connect to something bigger than yourself, mm -hmm. when you start to get to those you know, places, and sometimes I, yeah. I get to that place of, you know, that, that beautiful, blissful place. And sometimes I don't, Yeah. Uh -huh. you know, it's and true. it's just, but it, you know, I'm going to keep going, keep going, keep going because yeah. no matter whether I get there or not, it, it just felt really good for mm -hmm. my body. Amazing. It felt really good to just connect and move away from the busyness of the mind mm -hmm. and really connect into something greater than my own self. Oh, that's so yeah. beautiful. Yeah, I know I don't do, I don't have a personal meditation practice at home, but I do go somewhere, um, every, it's usually every two weeks where we're a group of eight women that get together and, and we have a guided meditation with the sound uh, and everything and I cherish that time, you know. Wonderful. So I mean, powerful. I'm sure you notice how, how you feel when you walk away from that. Definitely. Yeah. And at least I tell myself, don't feel guilty about not doing it on your own. At least you're doing that once every right. two weeks. It's better than nothing. So, and you have to fit yeah. it in where you can. Yeah. You know, not everybody has the time or, you know, the desire to want to meditate every day for yeah. an hour. And, you know, 10 years ago, I probably would wouldn't have done it okay but yes. it's just that it's it's fitting in well into my life right now I'm, yeah. I'm making the time for it because I know that it's benefiting me Definitely. but a lot of people can find meditation and and how they move about their day it's true right it's true um, and then when you get you know this wonderful uh, teacher I remember at one point said to me uh, or said to to the group uh, when you get really lost in your head and you want to try becoming more focused mm -hmm. just try adding ing to whatever it is you're doing so oh. if you're if you're doing the dishes so yeah. cleaning oh and so so just bringing that into a whole bunch of the things that you're doing to try okay. and bring more awareness into what you're doing in the moment by moment being more present yes with what you're doing that's an amazing idea yeah that's, that's like it's kind of neat it's it's so funny that um I've never heard that before, but I don't know if you know Gabby Bernstein. Sure. Her first book was okay. called Put More Ing in Your Life. Well, there you go. But it, <laughs> and it wasn't necessarily because okay. of that. I'm going to go reread it because I think she was talking about more about a higher power and consciousness. Okay. But uh, that is so interesting. <laughs> I'm going like, to kind of compare the two and see how they overlap. Right. That's really cool. I love that. So the other thing, Renee, that I'd like to touch on, um, uh, something that I've noticed about you, is you have a lot of integrity. And I don't, uh, I'm going to reference it in a couple of ways. One is, um, you, I got together with you a couple of years ago to make some YouTube videos. Yes. So we put together some videos and your idea was to put together a challenge. So people would uh, have a, do a restorative um, yoga challenge. So they're still up on your channel. And the first video, I think you were showing props and yes. then showing how to make the props mm -hmm. and then showing the the uh, the different positions and it was a great series and I think you got quite a few views uh, I think so. on the videos yeah, they I were fun <laughs> yeah I think it was a great idea and but I remember the one thing that you were very firm about was that you didn't want to have ads on your video oh yes yes and uh, and I just it just struck me but with everything you do in general I just I find you have a lot of integrity you're, you're very honest and true to yourself and and you do things very intentionally and I just uh, I love that about you. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. well I, I mean I, I think it's important to well I I think I, I'm teaching and I'm trying to share what I know because I know it's worked so well for me. Yes. I don't have to pretend I don't have to you know um, and then the YouTube thing well I, you know I think I'd be totally mortified if yes if there was a, like fast food or something or whatever exactly. you know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know it, it wouldn't it wouldn't feel so good so yes yeah. I, I you know I, I make these choices because I know exactly. that I'm also a very sensitive person yes right so yeah. it, uh, it has to feel good for me exactly I don't want it to to stress me out to think that oh my god I've just done this and yeah what have I done yeah so it's important for me to to you know walk the talk or 
talk the walk well, exactly. or whatever the expression exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and the, the internet is so vast. You know, I know you do a little bit of social media, but yep. um, how do you how do you balance? You know, being online. Do you spend a lot of time online? Do you do no? Much? I I, really. I uh, um, Facebook more promotion than anything yeah. else. Although I have to say that all of the friends that I have on Facebook are amazing and have yeah. beautiful positive posts. True. So I can't help but get sucked into that a little it's bit. True. I think yes. we all do a yeah. little bit. Yeah. But I try to limit myself. But Instagram, I'm I'm a bit of an Instagram junk, junkie. You like it? Yeah. I love taking photos. It's true, and Instagram is nice because you don't have like these. Well, you have a few more ads now, but you never used to have like the the big ads and and not a lot of text. Although some people do use it as a blog right. post. But you really focus on the images, which I love about Instagram. Yeah, the images and just how there's so much metaphor in life. Yes. Right. So yeah. the the beauty of nature and how we can let you know get that to translate it into into our day to day lives. True. So everything really becomes a metaphor. And, yeah. And so it, it's just interesting and fascinating for me yes. to see what the correlations are between the imagery that I'm cap you know yes. capturing and how that relates to how we look at life. Yeah. Yeah. Right? No, so it's that's, true. So that's, that's a lot of fun. So. I, you know, sometimes I get a little carried away, but for the most part, I think I have it pretty under balanced. control. I yes. think if I do three posts a week, I'm pretty happy. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I know you, I love seeing pictures of the, the healthy food that you eat. You have a garden. Uh, yes. We yeah. started, uh, yeah, Danny, I have a wonderful partner and, and he built this wonderful raised garden for us oh. a couple of years ago. And so we started growing our own food. There's a nice. big learning uh, curve there, yes. um, dealing with, with creatures in the area too. True, I, I think yeah. we have a critter that really likes our broccoli, so oh, I'm no. going to have to give up on broccoli. <laughs> 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 but uh, I mean, just, just there, there's just something amazing yeah. about this eating fresh cooked beans that you oh, just picked or amazing. making a salad from, you know, lettuce that you've just done and it's our tomatoes are all ripening now and the colors and oh, just, it's amazing. just beautiful. It's like, uh, you know, friend, a friend of mine that says, you know, you got to eat the rainbow. Yes, it's right? true. Yeah. yeah that's, so, what, that's what they uh, say. So trying to eat, trying to eat the rainbow. And, oh, and the taste is so incredible. Oh, amazing. Yeah, there's amazing. nothing like it. And, you know, yeah. try and encourage other people to do the same. Because yeah. Because you can, you can, who says you have to have grass on your front lawn? Yeah. Why can't you just pop up a little, a little, uh, a garden there and start yeah. growing some of your favorite fruits and vegetables. Well, that's it. And you know? I was talking to our friend Allison, and she says she has a basil plant that she keeps all winter long, and she keeps it going in her kitchen and just Absolutely. picks it to put her. Actually, yeah. basil is one of my favorite. That's oh, delicious. Yeah, yeah I just made yeah. pesto yesterday. Oh, amazing! That's <laughs> so good. So yeah. awesome. Yeah. Cool. So. Uh, Please tell us where we can find you, Renee, for your, for, let's start with the yoga. Okay. Tell us a little bit about where we could find you in Montreal for your yoga. Okay, so I work primarily on the West Island. Uh, I work at a couple of different places. So Om West, that's in Point Claire Village on St. Anne. Uh, you can check their schedule, I guess, at omwest.com. Yeah. Um, and I also uh, teach at uh, Yogology Center, which is a beautiful center uh, that's that was created by uh, some wonderful sisters. Um, to help people with anxiety and stress in their lives. Oh, so uh, yeah. so I teach restorative there as well, and you can find them at yogology.ca. Um, I teach from home, and I teach privately. I also teach from a clinic in DDO, okay. uh, the Continuum Clinic nice. in DDO. So that's uh, pr uh, private uh, sessions. So anybody that's interested in exploring the private sessions mm -hmm. of yoga therapy, uh, it's something that I really love to, to help people work with pain or Fantastic. tension or even just wanting to improve uh, okay. you know, their, their practice that they're with now. Okay. Um, so those are the three uh, primary places and I teach from home and I also do home visits. Okay, nice. Um, so you, you can see more details on my uh, yoga, on my website, okay. which is uh, lusciouslotus.com. Okay, and I'll link it up in the show notes. Okay. So yeah. lusciouslotus.com, you can find me uh, Luscious Lotus Yoga on Facebook. Facebook, okay. Luscious Lotus is art on Facebook nice. and both of those also on Instagram. On Instagram, that's yep. fantastic, yeah. amazing and uh, yeah I had a little sneak peek in your studio and you're working on a really interesting collection of pendants so tell us a little yes. bit about those pendants. The jewelry, well actually this is thanks to you Okay. because you, I was encouraged to start an, an, um, an Etsy page, yes. an, an Etsy exactly. shop yeah. and I started with these larger paintings mm -hmm. and you kept saying smaller, smaller, yeah, yeah, smaller. Yeah. <laughs> So I, you know, I, I would go to the store and get these smaller, smaller canvases, and I yeah. just kind of went, 
Oh. I was uninspired. Oh no! Okay. And I'd actually studied jewelry design for two years. I forgot way about that. Back when, yes. And I thought, well, instead of making canvases, why don't I just try making jewelry? Nice. With paint. And nice. So I, you know, I started exploring with wood and yeah. started painting wood, and so the jewelry stuff started to come back. Oh. And I thought, oh well. And then, and then I, I was curious to use. Well, what can I? What can I repurpose? Yes. Right, and okay. so, uh, and then I found mango pits were turned out to be amazing canvases. That is so crazy. <laughs> Those are and they're beautiful pieces. Nice shape. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So that that's so the the pendants and then and the earrings wow. and uh, so that's been a, a lot of fun. Wow. Um, to do and uh, these are all mangoes that you eat. Yes, you eat a lot of mangoes. <laughs> some people, mangoes some people have been donating. <laughs> oh, okay. So, I was mango, say. so my three <laughs> favorites are mango pits yeah. and avocado pits. Uh, now, what would you do with, with an avocado you can pit? Slice it's it. a little. Oh, you slice yeah, it. Yeah, you can slice it. Well, they're still soft. You can actually slice oh it. Oh my gosh! And if you slice them in half, they make this beautiful sort of uh, teardrop shape. Oh my which goodness! Which is really cool. And how long? And so they have, have to, to dry, dry for a long time. For a while. Yeah. You don't have a dehydrator or something. No, no. I probably should, but I don't, because I like painting wood as well. We used to have one. I'm gonna check my garage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 And the, yeah. my other, my, my most recent favorite is acorns. Oh my god! And you can cut those as well. No, nope. so no. acorns just have a beautiful oval shape. Oh my goodness! Um, so I just take off the top, so they have that little hat top. Yeah, So I yeah. take off the top, drill a hole through, and then they become these beautiful. Oh. Oh, so yeah. they're they're You'll really lovely and fun me. to work with. I'll grab a little um, pick of your yeah. jewelry so I can uh, put it in. The, but that how interesting, you know. We talked about the garden and your love of nature, and now you're doing jewelry with pieces from the nature. Yes, and, uh, it's so it all, much fun. It all comes together, eh? It's well, really it's a it's a big creative thing. There's a lot of trial and error. I yes. mean, I look at my first pieces that I did when I first started, and then you know, compared to, and it's just like anybody else, yeah. right? With with practice, you 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 know, develop this. Uh, I don't, just more comfort in what you're doing and, and you know you get more playful more explorative uh, uh, more uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, um, experimental experimental yeah. yes okay yes. yes so that's what you know working a lot experimenting with different things and uh, cool. and just loving the way it's uh, so I now it's just it. now I just got to figure out how to how to sell them <laughs> yeah oh, well I'll help you with that yes <laughs> And it's great you have such a beautiful space to work. I'm looking at the water out there and it's just incredible. Very inspiring. I love it. Nature is very inspiring. Yeah, definitely. Plus, you know, amazing people are very inspiring. Oh, absolutely. And that's what these uh, these episodes are all about. It's all my amazing friends and people that I meet and, and all the creative stuff that they do. and. And thank you so thank much you, for Heather. coming on. Thank that you. was so much fun. And uh, <laughs> we'll see everybody the next time. <laughs> thank bye. you. Bye. <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning in to Stories of Starting. Until next time, always remember, your story matters.